Good morning, everyone. I remember as a child that I always had a fascination with the past, as you can see from this lovely picture that my mother took of my father and me aged five. Sunday mornings and evenings, I used to spend them at the National Archaeological Museum of Athens. The museum was more than a place to visit. It was a place to meet my old friends, heroes, gods, goddesses made from marbles, wooden vessels, golden rings, which they could not talk to me, but the attraction to the past was inescapable. During these visits, I was felt that I was drawn to engage with the objects, start conversation with them, and ask for their own story. Every display was an opening door to different rooms of the past, and every little object signaled the path to storytelling. I wanted really to handle the objects, not merely look at them. And at the same time, I was actually curious to find out how people who cast the gaze over displayed objects take a quick photo in front of them and rush to the next thing in the row are related to the past. How do they think of the past and its people? How actually do they think of our relationship with those who live in the present and those who used to live in the past? Well, have I just portrayed a picture of museum visitors you recognize? Well, now, if you look closer at the picture behind me, you will actually look that there are coaches. You guessed right, my friend. These are coaches for tourists. Well, as I was growing older, I began wondering, why do these people come out of the way to come and visit the museum? I can understand why I wanted to be at the museum. The objects are there, a part of my culture, they are my heritage, I'm local to the area. What about them? I have a stake in that heritage. Do tourists have a stake in my heritage? Today, I have come here to share a surprising answer to that question. Yes, tourists do have also a stake in our heritage. I will be arguing that tourists, by sharing the heritage experiences via social media, they distribute knowledge about the heritage places they visit and they spend time there. As a result, what they do is actually they share our ev their evaluations about heritage, their understanding, and thus they shape heritage for the future. In this process, they become stewards, that is, guardians of the heritage they visit. Now, tourists, well, do we know them? Well, anyone of us here has been, one way or another, a tourist. You don't have to visit really far or to go to exotic places to become a tourist. You can just take a trip to a place you have never been before, and you can actually be a tourist. So, for instance, if you're a Roman and you fancy a trip into the north, you can be a tourist in Florence or in Venice. Or if you live in the south of England, you can visit the north of England and take a tour at the Hadrian's Wall. Well, you see, my friends, you can never leave behind you the Roman Empire wherever you go. <laughs> or if you're an American and you have not visited Europe before, you can always take a trip to Athens and Rome, get a taste of the heritage in which European culture is shared. Tourists, typically, are people who spend a minimum uh, amount of time, somebody could say, at a place they have not visited before, to enjoy 
to have some pleasure and enjoy their leisure time away from their own routine. As tourists, we often want to escape from our very own reality. Well, in that case, any possible attraction is a very welcome distraction. But is there anything to which tourists are particularly attracted to? Yes, you guessed right. Tourists tend to be attracted by heritage. Old places, ancient temples, sacred landscapes, and any little object or big site that might have cultural or natural significance. Well, why heritage is attractive to tourists? Well, one reason is that heritage is attractive to tourists because it can tell the story of the past and its people, providing possibly some information about past everyday lives. What else? Well, tourists tend to spread their gaze over heritage sites. How? Spending time in front of this place, walk around fields, battlefields, temples, following guided tours, and spending money on souvenirs. And I forgot the most important, taking photos in front of every statue and monument. Actually, they think it's of heritage significance. Now, as you probably know better than I do, a selfie these days in front of the Colosseum can defy eternity forever. <laughs> However, the loving relationship between heritage and tourists is not without ethical worries. One worry can be that we turn our heritage sites to Disneyland, providing inauthentic pictures for the sake of tourists' money. Another worry can be that heritage destinations like Pompeii, Machu Picchu, are in danger because of the amount of people who visit these places every year. Well, I do not really want to undermine the significance of these ethical worries. However, if tourists are involved in any ethical issue in relation to heritage, this is somewhat different from what I will be presenting here. What has transformed the power of tourists and the relationship, of course, with heritage is the emergence of social media. I'm sure, my friends, you are familiar with photo sharing here on Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, Instagram, Twitter. To take a photo in front of a monument is not merely anymore to mark a record of your visit at, as a tourist there. Tourists are not merely consumers and visitors of heritage places. They do more than this. Uploading our photos as tourists of heritage places via social media on the web, what we do is that actually we share our heritage experiences with others. It is in this capacity, in the capacity of sharing our experience heritage with others, where the tourists' ethical obligations lie towards heritage. Tourists nowadays are very similar to the Western travelers of the 17th and 18th century who mapped the heritage of Italy and Greece. Western, young, wealthy gentlemen at the time were encouraged to take, as you probably know, the grand tour of the Mediterranean Sea, spending time, mostly of their time, in Italy and a bit of the time in Greece. Given that the vast majority of them were artists, they were actually encouraged to visit ancient places full of ruins to familiarize themselves with forms of ancient art. Those travelers distributed the knowledge of these places 
and of course romanticized antiquity. At the same time, they share their experiences by published books. Let's not forget that books were the social media of the time. Those travelers, what well, they did, they visited sites, and of course, they shared their experience of those sites in what actually happened to constitute the canon of heritage, gave birth to antiquarianism, and much later to the science of archaeology. What they did, they distribute knowledge of the ruins of the past they visited, and they were stewards of them because they brought attention to what should have we should sustain for the future. Now, sharing can be both understood as exchange and distribution. As tourists, we share heritage sites with other people who happen to interact there um, in different capacities, such as archaeologists, anthropologists, heritage professionals, local people. Now, this interaction can lead to a social exchange. Take, for instance, local people and tourists. They share heritage sites. In that case, this can provide them with an excellent opportunity to meet and, of course, to communicate. And, of course, communication can take completely different forms from tourists seeking advice how to best interpret the heritage, and more importantly, how actually locals can tell the story of their own lives with heritage. But as well as sharing heritage in this way, we can also share heritage as distribution. So what I am arguing is that when we see sharing as distribution, that we must define a different set of obligations for tourists towards heritage. Sharing as distribution enables tourists to become stewards of the heritage sites they visit. As tourists in the 21st century, we share our life experiences with friends, family, and others, and we post our photos on the web. But when it comes to heritage, as tourists, we share more than experiences. We distribute knowledge about the past. So, for instance, you can ask, in this house, which is found in Cusco in Peru, and you can see in the photo I took a few years ago while I was there, what kind of knowledge am I distributing to you? But of course, there are many elements in knowledge. And it can take, for instance, different forms. So, what I am sharing when I post my photos on the web? So, for instance, if you look at this picture of the Berlin Wall I took three years ago, what I'm sharing with you, is it a memorandum of the significance of the Berlin Wall for the people of Berlin and the rest of the world? Or my art fascination with a piece of art that happened to be on the wall of Berlin? How we actually post our pictures online? What kind of comments they attract? And even how many likes we actually we accept as hits? It is not by accident that actually Tourists' perceptions, they count, as we see later, for business. So, in this way, by sharing, we share our interpretation, our evaluation of heritage, our understanding of heritage, and the meaning we assign to it. What we, what we share on the web is more than a photo. Why? Because heritage is not something static. It's dynamic in a constant negotiation in the terms of its meaning. And when we distribute knowledge about our heritage experiences, we implicitly define the future of the shape of heritage, and more importantly, how it should be developed. So as tourists, I said that it's not by accident that we, de we define with our presence there more than the future of heritage. Tourist perceptions count immensely for funding, sustainability, and business plans. So as you can see from this picture, this is again at Cusco in Peru, and this is a beautiful ancient Incan archway incorporating into a shopping arcade. 
What also you can see there, if you look closer, is the entrance of a shop of, an out of a famous auto clothing brand. And what also you cannot see on the picture is a hotel on the top of it, given that Cusco is a prime heritage destination. So in distributing heritage knowledge by sharing our pictures on the web, we play a role in how heritage should be understood and how heritage it should be developed. Now, this makes tourists implicitly stewards of heritage, as I have said here. We might not be experts on heritage, any of us who visit heritage places. We might not be related, of course, to the local people who have lived their lives through that heritage. But we are also guardians of those places. How, as tourists, we distribute our knowledge about these places, about heritage sites, and what does this knowledge entail plays a key role in heritage management and development for the future. So, my friends, the next time you take your photograph or photographic camera or these days iPhones, iPads, anything, and you are ready to take a photo of a temple such as the one at Coricanza in Cusco, Peru, the most significant temple in the ancient Incan Empire with a convent of San Domingo on the ruins of it, please remember, you are not merely a tourist at that time. You share your understanding and evaluation of that heritage place with the rest of the world. Your evaluation and your understanding shapes any plan for the future development of that place, of any heritage site. So, if you are a tourist who has become a steward by playing a role in the future development of heritage as you do, you therefore have a stake in the heritage of others. Thank you.